through the mist, there sat a little quarry engine. His name was Bertram, and he said that he was sold to act as a stationary engine for the castle's manor before being left by the mines. So, there wasn't really an old warrior? Well, they called him the old warrior because he was so brave, and being there for so long, he became very familiar with stories of heroic knights of chivalry and of mysterious legends. Legends, Toby, like what? Oh, all sorts. Before he went to Little Railway to be repaired, he told me tales about the Lady of the Lake, of healing caves in the hills, and the magic railroad. Utter nonsense. That little old engine must have spooked you into believing anything, Toby. It's not nonsense. <gasps> huh? Ah! W w where did you come from? Oh, never mind about that. You mind where those legends came from. They're all true, you know. You must believe these tales came from long ago, when the mysteries of the world were far less invisible than they are today. Ho ho! Uh, who's this? Uh, this is Merlin. He's working with the Eld to restore the castle too. Oh, Grand Olmsted Castle was built to fright off enemies until the lake ran dry, and the Lady of the Lake made sure it never has. Yes, It's um, my honor to protect the stability of the castle. Uh, well, the Fat Controller has asked us to help with the restoration too. Isn't that what you're supposed to be doing now, Percy? Oh, you're right! <laughs> Hearing all these stories has made me a bit late. I best be off. Bye-bye! You best be careful with those stone trucks, Percy. They're heavy. I know that, Thomas. He's going to struggle to get those up the hill. Um, Thomas? Where did Merlin go? <laughs> The Fat Controller's engines were helping with the Earl of Sodor's project to restore Olvstead Castle. This involved taking heavy trains of construction materials up a steep slope. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Help it! Help it! Dirty pussy! Don't Don't! With all his might, Percy fought to get the trucks up the hill. He was out of breath when he shunted them to the siding at the top. The trucks were disappointed that they couldn't cause trouble, but soon realised that they still had a chance. What are you looking at? <laughs> the trucks used the slope track to their advantage and pushed Percy back down the hill. Then there was trouble. Push it down the hill! Oh no! Stop! Stop! Faster! 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 Treat us like that, would you? So how did taking the trucks go? Oh dear, Topham, I'm truly sorry this has happened to one of your engines. Really, I am. Never mind, it wasn't Percy's fault. It's clear that this work may be too much for the branch line engines to handle alone. We've been meaning to upgrade the branch to let the bigger engines assist more sometimes. Perhaps this is the time. Aptly put, I must say, uh, Merlin wanted to help take some of the heavier trains to and from the castle, but I know he'll appreciate the help. <laughs> and I think I know just the engines to assist. <laughs> The Fat Controller's plan was soon put into action. It wasn't the first time Murder could venture onto the branch line, and he was happy to help out wherever he could. He thoroughly enjoyed the nature of the rural valley. The other big engines admired him. Look at him, he can pull dirty trucks just as if they were smart coaches. That'll show those branch line engines how easy their work really is. He certainly is a knight in shining armor when it comes to goods trains. Rather him than me. I just feel it's a disgrace that he should be shunting his own trains. Murdoch wasn't typically a pompous engine, but hearing the big engines praising him for what he thought was simple work did make him feel proud. Perhaps such a big impact on such a small branch line went to his smoke box. But Murdoch wasn't the only one helping out with the castle's restoration. Whilst Percy was at the works, Arthur took charge of the goods trains and often took away trucks of rubble from the castle. Good morning, young Arthur! 
Oh, hello Merlin. I uh, didn't see you there. I've never seen an engine work with so much care and attention. <laughs> well, I'm fairly stubborn when it comes to keeping a good track record, so I try to be as careful as I can be. Excuse me, you two. I need to be turned from my next train. Oh, uh, sorry Murdoch. Arthur, did I tell you the legend of the Holy Rails? No, but I'd love to hear Not it. Not now, thank you. It's far too noisy up here as it is. Arthur, could you please shunt the trucks away from the harbour, please? Oh, uh, sure thing, Murdoch. Sorry, Merlin. You weren't asked to shunt the trains for Murdoch and I, were you, young Arthur? No, but it's nice to do a favour for someone. It's just this once, anyway. But it wasn't just once. Murdoch was so influenced by the big engines, he began to expect Arthur to always shunt his trains for him, and waited patiently until he did so. Arthur complied without fuss, but Merlin noticed Murdoch never repaid the favour. Ah, good. I, uh, I thought I'd find you three here. Uh, there's going to be a special train for the representatives from the Soda Iron Trust to come and see the progress on the castle this evening. Now, I'll need one of you to take it, and the other two stay here and help with their preparations. Aha! Yes, now, now let me know who shall take watch quest when I get back. I must hurry. We've run out of the crown-shaped napkin rings for our guests. Cheerio! Uh, if it's okay with you two, I think I'd be the best suited to take the train this evening. Actually, Murdoch, why don't we both stay here and let Arthur take it? He's worked more than hard enough to deserve it. With all due respect, Merlin, I think this job needs a strong and fast engine. And who's to say Arthur isn't strong and fast? Hmm? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, but there's no way a tank engine is stronger than me. <laughs> I wouldn't like to cause an argument or anything. Well then, let's prove it! Determined to battle Murdoch's boastfulness, Merlin shunted a line of trucks together, filled with rock and scrap metal. After Percy's accident, workmen had put coupling hooks on the buffers to secure the trucks and prevent another runaway. Merlin knew this, but didn't tell the others. Legend has it that with the kindest heart, we'll be able to remove the trucks from the siding. So today, whoever can move these trucks shall be the one that takes the special train. What do you say? Just those trucks, that's easy. I can move those with one piston. Come on, ye! Ugh. Ugh, come on! Oh, come on! This isn't fair! You must have done something to these trucks! I've not done anything! I can prove it! I won't be able to move them myself! See? I can't move them either! Your turn, Arthur! Uh, Merlin. I, I don't think I can do this. Why should I be able to move those trucks if neither you or Murdoch could? You'll never be able to do anything if you don't believe in yourself. I'm tired of Murdoch thinking he's better than you and me. Go and show him that there's no such thing. I have returned. It looks like we'll have to substitute the crown-shaped napkin rings for dinosaur bone ones, but uh, we really must consider building a dinosaur park at some point. No. Oh. Uh, what's going on here? We're having a little contest to show Murdoch not to look down on others, sir. If you wouldn't mind, sir, could you uncouple those trucks from the buffers? Oh, a jewel! How very delightful! Well, oh, I see. Um, no, um, no, of course. Go on, Arthur. Do your best, Mahar. There's no more way he'll be able to move those trucks. They're solid as a rock. Oh. Huzzah! Whoa. Um. Okay. Uh. That was easier than I thought. Uh. I can't believe it. Must be something wrong with those trucks. Let me have another go. Before anyone could think to suggest otherwise, Murdoch was coupled to the trucks again, and with one mighty shove, he lurched them backwards. They certainly moved this time. Uh oh. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh 
Ho-ho-ho! Ghosting is the curse of all modern sports. Only they who has the kindest heart is able to move those trucks. Clearly you must do, Murdoch. But perhaps this is a sign that you haven't demonstrated it recently. Oh dear, Merlin, better luck next time, what? Merlin, will you fetch the mighty cranes to resurrect Murdoch back onto the rails? Arthur, could you, uh, please collect the special guest this evening? I believe you more than deserve to with the work you've done recently. I'd be honoured to, sir. And that was that. Whilst Arthur collected the guests, Murdoch shunted around the castle grounds. He found that it was more difficult than he remembered, but ashamed of his rudeness, he made sure he worked extra hard to make up for it. That night, all three gathered around the turntable. Um, if I may break the silence, I'd, uh, I'd like to say I'm sorry for being a little bit too uh, arrogant. Usually arrogance is out of my caliber, I must admit. That's okay. I learned something about myself too today. I'm going to try and believe in myself a little bit more, and never just settle for something that isn't fair. Though, I still don't understand how I was able to move those uh, trucks. Uh, well, uh, well um, uh, what's most important is that you both realise we're all equal. Look at this turntable. Nobody's at the front of it, because there is no front. We're all, all around it, together. No one is more superior than the other. Thank you for encouraging us, Merlin. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of abuse to remember that everyone is important. But it takes a hat of gold to see it. Wait, where's Merlin gone? The first stages of insanity sound like this. <laughs> Toby, I do not have time to play League of Legends with you. Go play it with Percy. I need some help uncoupling my tender. I'm going skinny dipping. <laughs> I'm the Earl. Blah, 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 blah. Early, early things. I like to do things that are early because I'm the Earl. <laughs> Could you tell I'm an Earl? <laughs> but Merlin noticed that Murdoch never repays a favour. What a douche. 